let's talk about the grading system in iNaturalist. Ideally, what you're looking for in iNaturalist is that once you've posted an observation, you want to get it identified to species, but you also want others to agree with that species designation. Um, as you can imagine, that doesn't always happen for a variety of reasons. Maybe the observation isn't good enough to uh, get it down to species, or perhaps it is a very difficult species to identify, or there may be some disagreement about that identification. So those are all pretty common examples of why a, an observation may not be or may not get to research grade. But I uh, initially, you would post an observation and it will have a grade and that's this need ID grade. Basically this is a grade of observation that needs to be identified. And so if I were to click on um, let's say the clouded yellow uh, observation, this is a butterfly, you can see that um, I, only I have made an identification and I haven't even made it to a species yet, although the iNaturalist has instituted something where it will also confirm genus identifications because some groups are just that difficult. But in this case, I'm the only one with an identification so far and there's no agreement on it yet. Ideally, someone would come along and add a species name or an agreement of some sort and then we can go from there. So all observations initially added start out as a need ID grade here and so you'll have this yellow banner around it and that will be the initial um, uh, flag if you will for the observation telling people that it needs identification okay well eventually you can get research grades as you scroll down you see now I have a few down here that have research grade and um, let's click on this green cloverworm moth for instance when I initially made this observation, I identified it as a green green cloverworm moth, and somebody agreed to that. And so, because there's at least two agreements on species level, it is a research grade. However, one, that does not necessarily mean that that's the actual species. Somebody could come along definitely and say, uh, this is not actually a green cloverworm moth because of X, Y, and Z. And they could point that out, and I could decide, okay, that makes sense, and I could change my own. Uh, identification to the new one. In general, what we're looking for is over here on the right. We're looking at this community taxon. We're looking at what it takes to become a research grade. So let's imagine that someone comes along and does say, um, no, this isn't a green clover worm and disagrees. Well, that's going to throw it out of research grade until it's resolved. You can get several people re uh, actually do identifications and agree. Essentially, you need two-thirds of agreement for it to become research grade. You can see right now it's 100%, but you need at least two-thirds of the people agreeing on something for it to be research grade. That's where it gets a little confusing because there, can, there are certainly many examples in iNaturalist where there's long lists of people that have uh, interacted with it, and uh, sometimes it can get a little obscure as to why something is research grade or why it is not I think the algorithm is um, um, sometimes a little complex, but in general, to get a research grade for a particular observation, you need at least two-thirds. You need at least two people to agree on species, and at least two-thirds of all of those making an identification to agree on that identification. Right? So let's also take a look at some other examples. I will tell you that once you add an observation, how you know someone has, say, made a identification or made a comment, you will see it up here in this red little cloud um, box. I'm going to click on it, and you can see that somebody has added an identification to an observation I made recently. I made one earlier today. You can click on it from here, and it's going to take you to that observation. So currently it's at needs ID, and that's because when I made the identification, I only identified it to genus, whereas this person um, identified it to species, the red milkweed beetle. Now at this point, I can decide whether I agree or not. And, and I've covered how to do identifications in a later video, but I might, for instance, hit compare just to see if there's anything else in the area that it could be confused with. And it looks like there's only one in this area in central Iowa that it could be and so I can select it here or I can go back and just hit agree and I hit agree 
and I now have changed my identification to Red Milkweed, Be Milkweed Beetle. It's nice that it saves kind of like the progress of species identification so you can see the history of it. That's useful, especially with difficult things. You, could, you can see the thought process that people are making as far as identification. But now you'll notice as I scroll up, this has now gone from a needs ID to research grade observation. Okay, So that's the difference between needs ID and research grade. Um, there is one other grade to, to look at, and it's something that uh, uh, can be impactful, especially for my students at ACC with regards to what counts as an observation. The one type of observation that doesn't count is a casual uh, observation. And in general, um, casual observations are those observations that are not necessarily something that iNaturalist is interested in or keeps track of or wants to keep track of. Let me show you an example. I'm going to go to back backwards to my observations. Let's take a look at this Japanese beetle observation that I added. Now, a casual observation typically is uh, turned in, an observation is typically turned into a casual observation in most often if that observation is of a domesticated or cultivated organism, one that is not wild or does not belong there um, fr by normal uh, means. Uh, uh, this gets a little confusing. Like in this particular example, these are Japanese beetles. They don't actually belong there, but they got there on uh, uh, through human introduction and they're invasive. So they're certainly not domestic or cultivated. They are an invasive species, something that you can see up here, this little pink uh, exclamation point. If you, have, if you click on it, tells you that this is introduced. For instance, there's different designations. There's some designations for endangered versus uh, endemic versus uh, uh, introduced, things like that. This is still a very valid um, uh, observation. However, imagine that the observation is not of the um, Japanese beetles, but is instead of the iris behind it. This iris is actually growing in a garden. This would be an inappropriate um, observation for iNaturalist. It doesn't mean that you can't put the, the, the uh, observation here. It just means it's going to get flagged in some way, usually as being non-wild. So if I go down, you can do this to observations. I don't recommend that you do this unless you're very I'm sure of what you're doing. But so for instance, someone can come along here and say in this little column that this organism is wild and say, no, this is not a wild organism. And they're going to, they're essentially flagging it. They can also flag inaccurate locations, inaccurate dates, if they happen to know. Let's say that you're showing an observation of a, um, oh, let's say, let's say you're showing the observation of a snake basking in the month of December when there's snow around. Well, that's clearly, a, a, a the or the date is probably wrong on that, so you can flag that. That doesn't happen very often. Occasionally, I get a photo of something I'm looking at and I cannot find the organism in the photo and I might flag it because I don't see evidence of the organism. This happens especially when people take pictures of something that they think is an organism. Maybe it's a, uh, they think it's a cocoon or something like that, but it turns out to be something that's non-living. You can flag it that way too. But by flagging it this way, if I scroll back up, I can now see that the observation is a casual observation. And again, this is going to throw it out of contention. You can't turn this into a research grade observation if it is flagged as casual. All right? And so this takes this out of the normal grading system between needs ID versus research grade. Now, again, observations can stay in the needs ID grade for a long time. I have some that have been a needs ID for a few years, in fact. And that's just because Sometimes my photos are, may not be the best, and then other times maybe it's a, of a mushroom, and mushrooms are just really hard to identify. That's fine. But just be clear that when um, I'm counting up uh, observations for your assignments and things like that, or when I'm looking to see what counts on a naturalist as an observation, casual observations will not count. And this is why you are strongly encouraged to avoid taking pictures of garden of, of plants in gardens of animals at zoos your pets uh, livestock none of those will count as a natural observation and will all get flagged as casual and will not show up in projects will not show up um, in in a search for the observations that I'm looking for for you as a student so try to avoid these types of 
of uh, observations and I need to before I leave to uncheck this because I'm not, uh, this is these are as Japanese beetles these are clearly wild even though they're introduced um, to the area so it goes back to being needs ID and I'm just now waiting for someone to confirm that this is indeed Japanese beetle which I know it to be all right so that is the grade system you have casual versus needs ID versus research grade and ideally you are looking to try to get your observations to research grade and that's where of course the community comes in and helps you with that as well okay in future videos we'll cover a little bit more of the functionality of the rest of iNaturalist but so far we have covered how to add an observation and looked at the uh, grading system in iNaturalist